Hello, this video is for STAT 310, handout number 11, part A, and we'll cover pages one through nine. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The data set that we will be using for handout 11 is a find cars, used cars data set, and that can be found in our Google folder for handout 11. Okay, so handout 11 covers a regression model with an indicator variable, sometimes called a dummy variable. And part A is going to consider models in which the slopes are equal. In part B, we will consider an unequal slopes model. Okay, so data has been collected from the Find Cars website. The Find Cars website allows you to easily search for specific makes and models of vehicles that are for sale in our region. And it mostly includes used cars. Here I have collected data on Honda Civics, Honda Accords, Toyota Corollas, and Toyota Camrys. Now for our analysis, we're only going to be considering the Toyota vehicles. We will not consider the Honda Accord or Honda Civics. My response variable here is going to be price of the vehicle. So that's what I'm trying to model. And I'm going to use the miles of the vehicle as a predictor variable or as an independent variable. And I'm also going to use whether or not it's a Camry or a Corolla. So I'm going to use the make and model of the vehicle. I excluded the Hondas just to make this handout a little simpler. So the first thing we need to do is just identify or select the Toyota vehicles out of our data set. And that's what's covered here on pages one and two of this handout. But I think the easiest way to do this is just to go into jump and show you. So you can see here that my data has Honda vehicles and Toyota vehicles. And what I want is just the Toyota vehicles to do my modeling. To identify that, or how I'm going to subset out my data, is to go underneath Rows, Row Selection, and then Select Where. So Rows, Rows Selection, Select Where. And I want to identify the make, that's going to be this first column, equal to a Toyota. So that'll pull only the Toyota vehicles. Actually, what this is going to do is just select the rows for the Toyota vehicles. So you can see down here in my rows box that I have nothing selected right now. But as soon as I click OK, it's going to go and identify all of the rows for which it's a Toyota vehicle. So now I have 65 rows selected, and these are only the Toyota vehicles. I'm now just going to pull a subset out from that. So I'm going to go Tables, Subset. I want to select rows. So I want to grab these 65 rows here that I have selected. Just so say OK. And that gets put into a new data sheet here. And this is the one that I'm going to want to use to build my model from because this has only Toyotas in it. Now it does have Toyota Camrys and it has Toyota Corollas as you can see. But I want to try to model both of those, or that's going to be a term in my model here. So let's go ahead and fit the model, and then I will go back to the handout. So analyze, fit model. Price is going to be my response variable. I want to use miles as one of my independent variables or predictor variables. And I also want to use make model as one of my variables. So I need both of those in the Construct Model Effects box. The output that I get here is the output that's similar to what we saw in the previous handout, in handout number 10. I have a graph here with some regression lines on it. I have two regression lines. You can see one for a Camry and one for the Corolla. I also have my summary of fit output here. One thing that I should have done is identify which of the dots are Camrys and which of the dots are Corollas. 
So to do that, let me go back to my data set for the Toyotas. I want to select rows and then color or mark by column. And here I want to select the make and model of the vehicle. So now red dots will be Toyota Camrys and blue dots will be Toyota Corollas. If you want a legend, you can make window with legend and that'll jump will produce a little legend for you. So here's my little legend that goes around along with my dots. So now if I go back and look at my regression output, you can see that the dots have been color coded according to the Camry or Corolla here. Okay, so that is done under rows and then color or mark by column. Okay, so let's go and talk about the trend lines that I'm getting here and also the model output down in the bottom here in my handout. So here's the model that we're fitting. Okay, model number one, price is equal to, I have a y-intercept here, I have a coefficient for miles, and then I have this model term in here which is going to be used to identify whether or not I'm talking about a Camry or a Corolla vehicle. So this extra term right here is what is giving me the two separate regression lines that I saw when I fit the model. Page four is just about color or marking by the column. Page five is just showing you how to set up the fit model box. So let's go to page six. Page six includes the regression output from model number one. Here's the scatter plot that we saw near the top of our regression output. And then the summary of fit, analysis of variance and parameter estimate output is provided near the bottom. So let's first just talk about how these two models are written out or how they're estimated. So the blue line again is for the Corolla and the red line is for the Camry. I'm gonna write out the model for the Corolla first. I'm just simply going to use the intercept term, which is 17,794. And I'm also going to use the slope or the miles, the coefficient on miles there, which is negative 0 0.08. I do not have to worry about this additional term here because this additional term, as you can see, is for the Camry. So if I want to know the equation of the line, the blue line here, the one for the Corolla, I would just express it as that 17,794, that's the intercept, minus 0 0.08 times miles. How about the red line? Well, the red line you can see is shifted up a little bit compared to the blue line. So a Camry is a little bit more expensive than a Corolla. How much it's shifted up is given by this additional term in the model. So that 955.7, or about $950, is how much of a jump I have between these two regression lines. So when I'm writing out the model for a Camry, I'm going to use my initial estimate of 17,794. I'm going to use the same coefficient for miles at negative 0 0.08. But then I have this extra term on here, this 955.70, $955.70. This extra term is just because it's a Camry. Now that extra term just gets put on or gets added to the 17,794. So the y-intercept for the red line, or for a Camry there, is this 17,750. So if you extend that red line up, it's going to cross at 18,750. I think I said 17 a moment ago. It should be 18,750. So that's how you can get the equations of these lines. And these lines are used to make predictions. You would just plug in a vehicle's miles to get their predicted price. You would use this equation here for a Corolla, and you would use this equation here for a Camry. 
Okay, how about some of the other parts of the output? Oh, let's talk about the meaning of each of these terms first. So let's interpret each of these terms. So the 17,794 is going to be the y-intercept for the blue line here, which is going to be the Corolla vehicles. So that is the y-intercept for the Corolla vehicles. So if a car, if a Corolla, excuse me, has zero miles on it, how much can I expect to spend on that vehicle? About $17,794. Now this uh, data set does not have new vehicles in it. And one thing that's going to be true is that the price is going to jump up quite a bit because it's new. It looks like the lowest miles that I have is about maybe, what is that, 15,000 or so? So I don't have vehicles way down here on the left. So I probably shouldn't trust that $17,794 value. I know it's going to jump up more than that when a vehicle is new. As soon as you drive a new vehicle off the lot, it depreciates quite a bit. But at least this model is telling me that the y-intercept is that. The slope here is negative 0.08, and that's the slope of both of these lines. So this is just telling me the depreciation of your vehicle. How much can I expect the price to go down per mile? Well, it's eight cents a mile. That's what this is saying. Certainly going down, a car with more vehicles is worth less than one that doesn't have many miles on it. So the price is going down and it's going down about eight cents per mile. That 955.70 again is just the change in the y-intercept between a Corolla and a Camry. So it's technically at the y-intercept over here. However, because this model has parallel slopes, or the slopes are the same, that amount of jump that I have at the y-intercept is the same here at 50,000. It's the same here at 75,000. It's the same at 150,000. It's the same irregardless of where I'm at. So that 955, again, just represents the price increase due to buying a Camry instead of a Corolla. That's what that beta 2 hat means. We still have the overall regression test. Okay, the overall regression test is given by the analysis of variance output. I now have two predictors or two independent variables in my model. So this test is just trying to establish whether or not I have a linear relationship between price and miles, or maybe it could be model of the vehicle, or maybe it's both miles and model. So that's why we call this an overall test. So can I use these variables to make a prediction for price? Is that a reasonable thing to do? And it is. The p-value here is less than 0.05. How about the summary of fit output? The R squared quantity here is given by about 88%, and the root mean square error value is about $1,450. That's in dollars there. R squared is a percentage, but root mean square error is in dollars. The interpretation of R squared is just that 87.5% of the variation in price, okay, that's my response variable, so about 87.5% of the variation in price can be explained using this model that includes miles and the model of the vehicle. So there's other things out there that will influence the price and that those other things will account for that additional, what is that, 12.5% of the variation that I have left over. Like the year of the vehicle probably will contribute to that other 12.5% or the number of options on the vehicle. The RMSE here is $1,449, and this is just the average residual value. Excuse me. This is the amount of error in the prediction of price. And we're talking about Toyota vehicles here. $1,450 is not really that much when I'm talking about prices in here. I mean, I got prices 16000 12000 Being off by $1,500 is not doing too bad. So that root mean square error value is pretty good. So what's actually happening with that term in that regression model? 
So let's talk a little bit about what the software package does. What the software package does is creates this indicator variable. And this indicator variable is just simply indicates what type of vehicle you have. The setup here is going to be, it's going to give a value of one if the model is a Camry and a value of zero otherwise. So I only have two models here, a Camry and a Corolla. So a Camry is going to give a value of one and a Corolla is going to get a value of zero. So now if I look at the model with that indicator variable in it, I have beta zero plus beta one times miles, and then I have beta two times this indicator term. Now this indicator term is again either going to be a one or a zero. Kind of a dummy term, it doesn't do much. If I'm talking about a Camry, I would plug one in for that quantity. And that's why I've done that's what I've done here. So for a Camry, I want to plug one in for model. Now this is going to give me beta two. Beta two times one is just beta two. And I can associate this beta two with the beta zero. Okay, because it doesn't have miles attached to it. So beta zero and beta two are just like terms here. I'm going to put those together and that's going to represent the y-intercept. Beta 1 is attached to miles, so that's going to represent the slope. If the Corolla, if I'm talking about a Corolla vehicle, then I need to plug 0 in for model. So down here, when I get into beta 2 times model, I'm simply going to use beta 2 times 0 here. That term's going to go away. As we said before, beta 0 represents the y-intercept for a Corolla. Beta 0 plus beta 2 represents the y-intercept for a Camry. So what is beta 2 doing for me? Again, it's just showing me the jump or the change in the y-intercept when I go from a Corolla up to a Camry. Oops, sorry about that. Those equal signs should be lined up. Make that look a little bit better. And as long as I've gone this far, I'm going to go ahead and finish doing that. OK, so let's talk about the t-tests that are done underneath parameter estimates. I have three values, or three t-tests. So this is underneath the parameter estimates. We were talking about that part earlier here. So now I'm talking about these tests. So what are these tests for? Well, I got three of them here. The first one is just going to test the intercept, and that's going to be for the Corolla vehicles. So beta zero is the y-intercept for the Corolla vehicles, as we've said just a moment ago here. That's what beta zero represents. That's just testing whether or not that thing is zero. This is less than 0 0.05, so I get to reject the h naught. h naught is wrong, and I get to say that the y-intercept is different than zero. Now, practically speaking, all that means is that the expected price for a new Corolla is different than zero. So I'm not really learning a whole lot by considering that test. Test number two is for the slope. This is less than 0 0.05, so again, I reject the H0. The H0 is wrong. Cross that out and believe the HA, and the HA says that the slope is different than zero. So what does that mean practically? It means that miles is going to have an impact or it's going to affect the price. And again, from the regression lines that I saw up above, I would believe that that's the case. This additional term here is just testing whether or not the jump when I go from a Corolla to a Camry is significant. So if we go up here and look at the lines, certainly it looks like I have a jump here with the data that I've collected. However, if I were to go collect another set of data, well, the blue dots are all going to change, the red dots are going to change, these lines are going to change. Is the red line in that situation going to be different than the blue line? That's what this test is for. Test number three is trying to determine whether or not I can expect a Camry to be more expensive than a Corolla. And the answer to that is yes, you can. The p-value for that term is, again, less than 0.05. So that's telling me that this beta 2 term in the model is different than 0. So I can expect the y-intercept for a Camry 
to be different than a Corolla. Now, because I'm fitting, again, a parallel slopes, what I say at the y-intercept holds for any miles. Okay, some final thoughts. The overall regression test suggests that the expected price can be modeled using these two predictors, miles and models, and model, either a Camry or a Corolla. The model appears to be a pretty good model. My R squared is fairly high, and my root mean square error value is pretty small. Test number three suggests that there is a difference in the expected price between the Camry and Corolla. Before I start using this model to make predictions, I need to check the model assumptions. Now, handout number 11, part B, is going to consider a model where I allow the slopes to be different from one another. So this model that I fit, I was forcing the slopes to be parallel. Well, maybe I don't do, want to do that. Maybe I should let the data determine whether or not the slopes are parallel. So when I'm doing that, I need yet a, one more term here. And that's what handout 11 part B is going to consider. OK, that does it then for handout number 11 part A that covered pages 1 through 9. Thank you.